بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the name of Allah and all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings and prayers be upon his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam All praise is due to Allah whom we turn to for help, forgiveness and guidance to the right path and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our deeds. For whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, then only Allah, the Almighty, can guide him. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, the Almighty, without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his slave and messenger. May the peace and prayers and blessings be upon him until the day of judgment. O you who believe, fear Allah as it should be feared, and die only as Muslims. Know, my dear brothers and sisters, that the best speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is the guidance of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And know that every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation and every innovation is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the hellfire. We seek refuge in Allah, the Almighty, from the hellfire. Mm -hmm. My dear brothers and sisters, as you have already been informed, tonight's lecture is on the bank the bankrupt person, the real bankrupt person amongst this Ummah. This bankrupt person, we have been informed about him in a hadith by the Prophet وسلم, which is narrated in Sahih Muslim. It's a very interesting hadith, a very important hadith. It's an amazing hadith. And there are huge lessons to be learned from it. So I want you to ponder and reflect with me over these huge lessons in this hadith of ours tonight. So that you can, inshallah, benefit fully from this lecture. This hadith my dear brothers and sisters, informs us of the well-being of a person in this world and his salvation in the hereafter. Again, I repeat, this hadith informs us of a person's well-being in this world and his salvation or the reason for his salvation in the hereafter and or you can twist it around turn it around and say that this hadith informs us about the downfall of a person in this world and his destruction in the hereafter so i'm sure now you can grasp the importance of this hadith if it's to do with your salvation huh, in this world and in the hereafter and or your downfall in this world and in the hereafter then I am sure each and every one of you should concern himself strongly and ponder and reflect over this hadith and learn the main lesson of this hadith this hadith, my dear brothers, is the saying of the Prophet وسلم, to his companions. He said to them one day, Atadruna mani muflis? Qalu al muflisu fina man la dirham lahu wa la mata'. Prophet وسلم, said to his Sahaba, his companions, radiallahu anhum, one day, 
He said, do you know who the bankrupt person amongst you is? They said, they, they thinking, he's asking about huh? this. They said, the bankrupt person, O Prophet of Allah, amongst us, is he who doesn't have huh? لا درهم له ولا متاع. He doesn't have any currency, no money, nor any assets, no wealth. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says or replied Al-Muflisu fi ummati man yati yawm al-qiyamah man yati yawm al-qiyamah bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin Wow! Wow! The bankrupt person amongst my ummah is the one who comes on the day of judgment. Huh? He shifted us now, the Prophet has shifted us to the hereafter. He comes on the day of judgment and he comes with prayer and fasting and zakat. Look at that. He's performed his oblig obligatory huh? duties. In fact, these are not obligate, these are pillars of Islam. Prayer and fasting and zakat. He's actually come with the pillars of Islam. Okay. So how is he bankrupt? Look what the Prophet ﷺ continues on to say. Wayati. Okay, so he's come with this and he's also come with something else. Wayati. وَقَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَالَ هَذَا وَسَفَقَ دَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا Okay, that's interesting. So he's come with his prayers and fasting and zakat, but he's come with something else which is not good. He's come with abusing people. He's abused this person. Huh? And falsely accused this person. And wrongly taken the wealth of this person. And he spilt the blood of this person. And he has beaten or hit this person and this person does not mean a singular person it could mean a group of people it could be hundreds millions of people that he's accused or abused or stolen money from or hit okay what happens what happens to this person? Prophet ﷺ informs. فَيُعْطَى هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ يُعْطَى هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ He will give this person from his good deeds and that person from his good deeds. He has to what? He has to repay back. Huh? The people that he has wronged. And as you know, on the day of judgment, paying back the people that you have wronged. How do you deal with that? With good deeds and bad deeds. There's no money there. Huh? You can't repay back in any way or form or shape except through your good deeds and or your bad deeds. So he has to give this person from his good deeds and that person from his good deeds. Watch what the Prophet ﷺ imports. فَإِنْ فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُ وَلَمْ يُقْضَى مَا عَلَيْهِ أُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُ 
فطرحت علي فطرح في النار والعياذ بالله so he gives this person from his good deeds and that person from his good deeds if his good deeds are exhausted finished and that's what happens with this bankrupt person his good deeds are exhausted what happens and he's still owing people he's still wrong people and he's still owing them what happens the bad deeds are offloaded to him bad deeds are taken from them and put into his record book they're offloaded onto him and then he is dragged into the hellfire Allahu Akbar. he's dragged into the hellfire okay pay attention pay attention carefully to this hadith as you can see this man came with his worships he had done his duties and obligations so you can say he passed he was given a pass mark in his worship and obligations but but what about his dealings with people his character he's failed terribly accused this person abused this person stolen the money of this person spilt the blood of that person beaten that person he's failed his subhanallah if you realize in this hadith his dealings with people have overridden his good deeds which he earned from his worships they've invalidated they've wiped away his good deeds which he earned from his worships to show you my dear brothers how important good morals and character and your dealings with people are and we always hear from our, from our elders ad al-mu'amala and it's true even though that's not a hadith a lot of them say it's a hadith but in reality it's not a hadith but there are a lot of verses and hadiths that yes have that meaning ad al-mu'amala religion is about how you deal with others how you treat others very true Allah, your dealings with people over this bankrupt person, over road, huh? wiped away all the good deeds that you gained from your worships, from your prayer, from your fasting, from your zakat, from your hajj. La ilaha illallah. But how important is it to take care of how you deal with people? my dear brothers so don't only look at your worships and your obligations and think you're safe alhamdulillah I've done my salat I've done my zakat I've done my hajj and then with your dealings with people and the way you treat people is terrible and I always give examples of how you can easily lose millions of hasanat by a word of yours that you say and unfortunately this is carelessness on our behalf slandering people abusing people backbiting people huh and scholars have given examples of how a person can lose a million or millions of hasanat just like that by one sentence 
And you hear that. You hear that. It's regular. You hear it on the lips of our brothers and sisters. He deals with, let's say, a Pakistani brother or an Indian brother or a Lebanese brother. Or, uh, and that Lebanese brother or Indian brother or Pakistani brother is not all the best. He treated on him. So what does he say? He comes out and makes a conclusion. All Pakistanis are traitors or liars. Or all Indians are traitors and liars. Or all, all Lebanese, all Egyptians. All... Pakistanis, how much a million of Pakistanis are there? Over a hundred million Pakistanis. On the day of judgment, you're going to have to give each one of these Pakistanis one of your good deeds. Because you wronged them. 150 million Indians, Muslims, same thing. But be careful. Watch your tongue. Watch what you say. Watch what you say, my dear brothers. And watch and conduct yourself. Also, be careful of how you behave towards others. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just to show you, I mean, dealing with people in a bad way is very severe and destructive. And if you're to deal with them in a goodly manner and have good morals and character, it's also very rewarding, very virtuous. أثقل شيء في ميزان العبد يوم القيامة وحسن الخلق. The heaviest thing on the scale. Of a, uh, in a person's record book on the day of judgment is what? Is good character. That's what the Prophet ﷺ informs. And he informs that a person through his good character reaches the level of a person praying the whole night and fasting the whole day. وَإِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِ لَيُدْرِكْ بِحُسْنِ خُلُقِهِ دَرَجَةَ الصَّائِمْ الْقَائِمْ Through his good deeds, through his good character and morals and conduct, he gains the rewards of a person praying the whole night and fasting every day. How much more rewarding do you want than that? Prophet ﷺ, in fact, he informs in another hadith, وَأَنَا زَعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ حَسُنَ خُلُقٍ and I guarantee a person the highest level of paradise. For what? For his good character, his good morals. And he says in another hadith, إِنَّ مِنْ أَقْرَبِكُمْ إِلَيَّ مَجْلِسًا إِنَّ مِنْ أَحَبِّكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَأَقْرَبِكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ خُلُقًا The most beloved of you to me, the Prophet and we all claim to love the Prophet if you truly love the Prophet then apply this hadith the close the most beloved of you to me and the closest to me on the day of judgment amongst you is he who is best in character is he who is best akmalul mu'minina imanan the most complete of believers are those who have best morals, best character. And the hadiths on good morals and good character go on and on and on. Very, very virtuous. أكثر ما يدخل الناس الجنة the thing that enters the people the most paradise two things God fearingness and good character see where you stand concerning this important issue my dear brother and ask yourself and take account of your deeds and actions and reform and rectify yourself. Reform and rectify yourself. 
Work on bettering yourself at all times. And don't have this mentality of, I can't change, I'm like that. A lot of brothers and sisters, they're of that mentality. No. Look how the Sahaba were, radiallahu anhum, in their pre-Islamic days. Look how they became after. They became Muslims. They reformed themselves. They became better people. Ask a revert, one who reverts to Islam, whether a brother or a sister, what has Islam done for you? Automatically they'll tell you, naturally they'll tell you, it's Islam has made me a better person. Islam should reform you, should rectify you, especially your character. It should always make you a better person towards yourself, towards your Lord, towards your prophet, towards your wife, towards your children, towards your neighbors, towards the non-Muslims, towards the animals, towards the environment. SubhanAllah. Because Islam is all-encompassing. That's the beauty of Islam. It enters into every field, covers everything. It's a complete, beautiful religion. It hasn't left out anything. Okay. Something very important that I want to share with you related to this hadith. When you study the Quran and Sunnah, you find that the worships have been legislated for a very important purpose. Not only to affirm Allah's oneness and greatness and might and to be submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and has something very important in it. These worships are there also to reform your character my dear brothers and sisters. They've been legislated to reform your character. They should have a huge role in reforming and rectifying your character. And let's have a look at some of these worships and see how did the scholars derive this. Let's look at the prayer, the most important pillar after the testimony of faith. What does Allah the Almighty say about the prayer? He the Almighty says, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Prayer indeed huh? should prevent you, prevents from you falling into evil and bad deeds, promiscuous deeds. Okay, so the prayer should yield and produce some fruit and that is to keep you away from evil, promiscuous, bad deeds. If the prayer is not doing that, what do you need to check? You need to see, you need to check the prayer. Are you performing it correctly? As you are ordered and commanded by Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are you performing it with khushu'? Are you being God conscious in your prayer? Is your heart and mind present in the prayer? Or is it wandering off? Huh? Allahu Akbar. What's my wife cooking? Oh, I've got some business to do. Oh, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, and you haven't comprehended anything of your prayer. Or you may have focused for a minute or two and then wandered off in your prayer. Because what is key to the prayer, my dear brothers, is for sure in the prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ 
في صلاتهم خاشعون. He didn't say الذين يصلون. قد أفلح المؤمنون. Indeed, the believers have succeeded. What's part of the characteristics? Huh? Those who are God conscious in the prayer. He didn't say those who pray. Takhushur is key to your salat. When you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Allah is greater than my wealth, than my children, than my wife, than my business, than anything else. Push everything away now and focus on Allah. Focus on your prayer. And look at that, subhanAllah. Yani, that Allahu Akbar is a constant reminder of you to go back if you've wandered off. Allahu Akbar, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa tabaraka asma. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And then you wander off. Huh? Allah, oh, Allahu Akbar. It's a reminder. Huh? You're going down in bowing now. Sami Allahu liman hamid rabbana wa laqal hamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah. Just to keep you focused right throughout the prayer. The prayer should yield and produce in you good character. It should keep you away from sin, from evil deeds. And if it's not, check your prayer. Check your prayer. Let's take another example. Zakat, the prescribed almsgiving, the obligatory almsgiving. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the zakat? خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their wealth a charity, the obligatory charity, the zakat. To cleanse them from their sins and to purify them from the diseases of the heart, stinginess and greediness, and other diseases of the heart. It should yield in you, in that, it should also purify you from, cleanse you from sins. Keep you away from sins. And it should purify your heart from stinginess and greediness. It should instill in you generosity. It should instill in you kindness, affection towards your brothers and sisters in giving. Don't invalidate your sadaqat, whether it's zakat or charity, voluntary charity. By doing what? By reminding the person that you are giving of your generosity towards him. Because you're, not, you're doing it for Allah's sake. And do not abuse him when giving him. Ah, look. Giving you, ah, look, that's you know, I've got a hand, upper hand on you. I've always reminded him and belittling him and mocking him and, and making him feel awkward. If this person deserves it, if he's poor or, or he's in need, or you give him for Allah's sake, seeking the rewards from Allah, not to show off or boast. In front of people and to injure and remind him of your generosity. This is something very, very important. It should also rectify, zakat should rectify your character and reform it. It should instill in you generosity, affection, care, brotherhood. Let's take another example. Fasting. Fasting. The 
Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man lam yada' qawl al-zur wal-amala bih falaysa lillahi haja fi an yada' ta'amahu wa shara'ah. He who does not leave false testimony and acting upon it, Allah is not in need of him leaving his food and drink. SubhanAllah, look at that. Fasting should yield and produce in you false talk, obscene talk. As is shown more clearly in another hadith. ليس الصيام من الطعام والشراب فقط إنما الصيام من اللغو والرفث فإن سابك أحد أو جهل عليه فقل إني صائم إني صائم Fasting is not only from leaving your food and drink it is also from leaving obscene talk and indulging in sexual activity during the fast. If anyone is ignorant towards you, or if anyone abuses you, say, I am fasting, I am fasting. Look what fasting should yield in you and produce. Should make you keep away from obscene talk, from slandering, backbiting, abusing people, huh? cursing people, Using foul language. That's how a Muslim is, isn't it? Doesn't the Prophet ﷺ say a Muslim is one who does not curse, nor swear, nor abuse, nor use foul language? Doesn't the Prophet ﷺ say a Muslim is he whom the Muslims are safe from his tongue and from his hands? That's what fasting should do to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Hajj. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ That's what hajj should yield and produce. Whoever intends on doing hajj should keep away from sexual activity from obscene talk and from quarreling. مَنْ حَجَّ فَلَمْ يَرْفُثْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ رَجَعَكَ يَوْمِ وَلَدَتْهُ Whoever does hajj and does not indulge in sexual activity during hajj, nor in obscene talk, in foul language, in sin, he will go back as if he is newly born from his mother, free of sin. That's what Hajj should yield and produce in you. It should rectify and reform your character and keep you away from sin, from obscene talk, from quarreling. But subhanAllah, if you were to look in every worship, there's some hikmah, some wisdom behind it concerning your character. Concerning your character. And if it doesn't give the, yani the, the required benefit, then check that ibadah, check that worship. Have you done it right? Are you doing it correctly? Or is there shortages and shortcomings in it? If that is the case, then you should immediately work on perfecting that worship. Work on correcting the shortages and shortcomings in that worship. Bi'idhnillah, it would have the desired result. Bi'idhnillah. If I were to ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, who is the best person to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of this earth? Who would you say? Huh? Without a doubt. Automatically and naturally, it's the Prophet 
salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Okay, he's the best worshipper What did it yield and produce in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Look at the affirmation Look at the confirmation huh? From above the seventh heaven Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnesses وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ سبحان الله وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are of excellent character. Salawat Rabbi wa salam muhanim. Why? Because he used to do his worship in the best form and shape. The most perfect way of doing the worship. The most complete and perfect way of doing the worship. What did it yield and produce in him? The best, most excellent character. Who witnessed to that? The Almighty. Indeed, you are of excellent character. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So worship and character are what are connected interrelated, intertwined. It's a big link, a big connection between the two. And to check on yourself, check and see if these worships are yielding and producing for you good, excellent character, which they should be. If they are not, then rectify, reform yourself. Take account of your deeds and your actions and your worships. May Allah the Almighty perfect our morals and our character as He perfected our creation. O oh Allah, guide us to the best of character and morals as you guided us and push away from us the worst and the most evil of characters and morals. اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت أو الله we ask you paradise and that which brings us closer to it whether words and or actions and we seek refuge in you from the hellfire and that which brings us closer to it whether by word or by action صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد Mr. Quick announcement: uh, the food that is provided is provided by one of the brothers. Uh,